Apart from the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the big headlines disturbing stock markets all around the world is the expected increase in interest rates by the United States Federal Reserve. The speculation is rife that interest rates can be raised by as many as six times in 2022, totaling to an increase of 150 basis points. This has led to foreign institutional investors dumping over $8 billion worth of local shares since October of 2021. And so in this video, we shall examine why is the Federal Reserve planning to increase interest rates? How does that lead to a pullout from Indian equities for FIIs? What does inflation and rising interest rates in the United States mean for Indian companies? And finally, what can investors do in a situation like this? Let's begin. The US Fed has kept rates near the zero level since the 2008 financial crisis. And while there were some signs of it coming up in the 2017 to 2019 period, the COVID pandemic struck hard at global economies in 2020 and interest rates were back to near zero levels. Now the rationale for keeping rates low is simple. Low rates mean more people and businesses can borrow to spend and grow their business which means there is more economic activity in the form of more consumption, more investment, more asset creation and more jobs, which all accumulates to a higher economic benefit for all stakeholders. While keeping rates low sounds like an incredibly convenient and practical way of promoting growth, it does have one glaring drawback. You see, when cheap money is available, asset prices start to rise. It's a bit like how you and I generally behave. For instance, if we have more money in our pocket, we don't negotiate before buying and we don't bother to find the best deals. That's a lot like how cheap money behaves, which pushes up the price of everything, including houses, steel, bread, soft drinks, businesses, etc. And this in common parlance is called inflation. Now, as it stands, inflation in the United States is at a 40-year high, with this number touching 7.5% in January of 2022. So why has inflation sprung up so sharply there? We think there are three reasons to it. One, money continues to be printed and interest rates have been low for over a decade now, which means there is an abundance of cheap money. Number two, there has been a reduction in the production levels in the US, largely due to COVID-led disruptions like factory shutdowns, shortage of supplies, shortage of labor, etc. And thirdly, there is an uptake in demand as people are saving a lot more money by staying at home and the US government too has been writing stimulus checks. Now, when inflation rises, increasing interest rates is a central bank standard reaction. Higher interest rates make it expensive for people and businesses to borrow, which consequently cools off demand and leads to a dip in the inflation rate. Apart from the increasing interest rates, the US Fed has also decided to stop the liquidity infusion that it has been doing until now to support the economy. Liquidity infusion sounds a bit technical, so in simpler terms, it refers to the US Federal Reserve's ongoing program of buying bonds from banks. You see, when the Fed buys bonds from banks, it is basically boosting the money supply, which means banks have more money and they can increase their lending activity to individuals and businesses. So by putting a stop to this liquidity infusion, the Fed is clearly aiming to constrain the bank's ability to lend. This means that there will be less money to lend, which will reduce economic activity, at least the speculative economic activity, which in turn will have a decelerating effect on inflation. So to put it all together between the increase in interest rates and the stopping of the bond buying program, the Federal Reserve aims to suck out the system's excess liquidity, which is then likely to arrest inflation and bring it down to manageable numbers. Foreign institutional investors like foreign banks and pension funds often invest in high growth emerging markets. Markets like India, China, Vietnam, Turkey, Mexico, etc. Now, FIIs are flush with cash if the Federal Reserve is releasing more liquidity. And consequently, a good chunk of that money ends up finding its way into our financial markets. 
in addition to liquidity. What also helps tilt the balance towards India is the country's documented economic growth and also the fact that US bond interest rates are closer to zero. These factors have prompted a number of US institutional investors to pump money into Indian stocks, which was instrumental in our equity markets recovering so swiftly from that sharp dip in March of 2020. In numbers, about 2,60,000 crores of net FII money found its way into the Indian stock markets in FY 2021, which then pushed the Nifty and the Sensex to new all-time highs. But what goes up has to come down and there has been a visible FII outflow over the last four months. Now there are three clear reasons for this exodus. The first reason are the tightening liquidity conditions which is something we discussed earlier in this video. The US Fed has indicated an increase in interest rates and with the relaxation in the buying of bank bonds, a lot less easy money will be available for investment in risky assets like equities. The second reason for FII's pulling out of equities is a lowering of the equity risk premium. Now let me explain this. Simply said, the equity risk premium is the excess returns one can expect to earn by investing in the stock market over a risk-free instrument like a government security. This excess return compensates investors for taking on a relatively higher level of risk when investing in equities. Now, interest rates generally have an inverse relationship to equity risk premiums. So when interest rates goes up, the risk premium declines, which makes investing of equities a lot less attractive. This, by logic, brings down any incremental flows into equity and may also result in investors exiting equities and deploying their money on other assets. A third reason pulling down the stock markets are the lower valuation of companies, which is attributable to an increase in interest rates. You see, most equity analysts swear by the discounted cash flow method for valuing a company. The basic principle of a DCF is to project future cash flows of a business and to discount it at a particular rate to arrive at today's value of the business. This rate, this discount rate is a crucial number and generally when the interest rate in the economy moves higher, so does the discount rate that the analyst uses. While this is not a firm rule, and I know of practitioners who use a single number irrespective of the interest rates, many analysts do play around with this discount rate number. So let's see what happens to valuations if the analyst moves around this discount rate. Now let's say all companies in the Indian stock market put together are expecting a cash flow of 1000 crores in the coming year. And since we are in a growth cycle, the general expectation is that cash flows will increase by 15% every year until the fifth year, which is the year when we terminate our basic DCF. This gives us our numerator and step two is to layer the discount rate on top of it. Now, since we are in a low interest rate regime, let's assume a discount rate of 5%. We thus have our numerators and denominators and their summation gives us a discounted future cash flow for the Indian stock market at 5,759 crores. Now we said that as the interest rates go higher, analysts look at upping the discount rates. So let's do that and let's assume a discount rate of 12% now. We apply the same process as before and this time around, the revised discounted future cash flow comes to 4,709 crores. In other words, this new scenario is giving us the present value of future cash flows, which is a good 19% lower than the previous scenario. I hope everyone can see what has just happened here. The numerator, the cash flow has remained the same and the mere change in the discount rate has created such a drastic change in the valuations. So in essence, a rising interest rate or even its expectation can lead to a downward revision in the company or stock market's valuation in spite of no changes to the cash flow or the earnings of the same. This too can be a reason leading to a pulling out of monies from the Indian stock markets. The first repercussion of a rising US inflation and by consequence a rising interest rate is that raising money from abroad will become costlier. This negative impact on the cost of capital might mean some companies will have to keep their expansion plans on hold until the rates normalize. A second consequence of these events in the US is a potential drop in the company's operating margins due to commodity inflation. 
You see, when prices increase globally, it leads to higher imported inflation, which means everything that India imports will become costlier. For example, oil is currently at about $100 a barrel. And with India being a net importer of oil, this literally adds fuel to India's inflation stats in addition to negatively affecting Indian companies that are into industrial goods, automobiles, manufacturing companies, etc. Now, one solution to preserving margins is that the company can raise prices and pass the burden of higher material costs to the consumers. And while this may work in some industries, it doesn't do well in most cases given the level of competition that we face from specialist exporting countries in Asia, South America and even Africa. In that context, it becomes imperative for the Reserve Bank of India to align its own monetary policy which might need it to raise interest rates domestically on account of this rise in overall inflation. So how worried should investors be with this rise in US interest rates? In our opinion, not much. You see, a stock market correction driven by the US Fed's policies is not happening for the first time. Case in point is May of 2013, when former US Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke said that the Fed would take a step down in the pace of bond purchases if it saw continued improvement in economic conditions. In other words, Mr. Bernanke was speaking of tightening liquidity which had its effect in the US with bond yields rocketing up and the equity markets witnessing a sharp decline. The Nifty and the Sensex also witnessed a sharp fall of 10% only to bounce back over the next few months. Now the amount of correction or the time it takes for the stock markets to bounce back is always unpredictable. But the takeaway from the 2013 episode is that the Indian equity markets have a lot of inbred buoyancy that allows it to track back to previous levels and grow from there. I talk about this buoyancy now more than ever because over the years the influence of FIIs has continuously been reducing while that of domestic institutional investors which includes mutual funds and pension funds is on the rise. This is of course aided by the Indian retail investors who are regularly investing often through SIPs which now accumulates to over 10,000 crores of investment every month into the markets. Add to this the fact that direct purchase of stocks by retail investors has grown considerably in the past two years and we have this invisible but important level of support to cushion the impact of FIIs pulling out their investments. So what can you do as an investor? Number one, you can play the long game and focus on the meat of the matter that is earnings growth. Because irrespective of what the FIIs do or what happens to interest rates in the US, it's the earnings growth of Indian companies that would be the primary determinant of how the Indian stock markets move in the long run. So far, there has been a strong correlation on that front and there is no reason to question why this trend will not continue for years and decades into the future. In essence, long-term investors can take these corrections as small bumps and bruises in an otherwise adventurous and profitable boat ride. The other thing investors can do is to tactically play these events. You see, some sectors generally benefit from the interest rate hike. For example, the financial sector, which includes banks, brokerages, mortgage companies and insurance companies often see an uptick in earnings when interest rates go up. On the other hand, asset classes like bonds often see a dip in prices when these interest rates are up. Of course, this requires proper monitoring and tracking of these developments. And if this is a bit too much for you, then one can explore creating portfolio strategies via ET Money Genius. In a recent video, I covered our intelligent investing service in greater details and how it balances these external events using multi-asset allocation, periodic rebalancing and an always present risk management layer that aims for higher than benchmark returns, consistent returns and excellent downside protection. So do watch that video and check out the performance data on the different strategies on the ET Money app. And if you have any questions, feel free to post it on YouTube, Twitter, or any of our social media properties. And with this, we come to the end of this video. If you like this video, then do tap on that like button. Do share this video with your friends, subscribe to the ET Money channel, and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then.
Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.